Good afternoon. Welcome, everyone. Uh, my name is Mike Borkford. I'm superintendent of St. River School Division. I'm happy to be here today to, uh, yeah, I want to make sure everyone can hear me. Uh, and uh, just so you know, on the bottom of the screen, there is an opportunity for you to provide, uh, ask questions, and I will try to answer them either as I go along or at the end of the session. I'm really happy to be here and to share some information about uh, some of my experiences in uh, creating a culture of continuous change and improvement. Uh, Janice had asked me to uh, present today, so I wanted to share with you a little bit of that. So feel please feel free to uh, answer any ask me any questions. So as we start off, one of the biggest things for us in our division is we talk about what are our learning intentions. So today we are going to learn to understand the characteristics of, of successful learning organizations. I want all of us to reflect upon the importance of the shared responsibility between the board and the superintendent in creating a culture of learning and also to understand the challenges that come in school division improvement. Uh, I feel that we'll be successful today if I, I can describe the characteristics of a learning organization, if I can identify the importance of the interconnectedness uh, of the different components of system improvement, and if I can reflect, uh, if I can understand the challenges in school, in school division improvement. So for me, the one of the biggest questions I had is what makes an, in, an innovative and creative and successful school division? So when we started, that's one big question that we've had in, in, in our school division. And, uh, how is our board a learning board? If we're about learning and our primary responsibility is to develop strong learning, how do we create that culture of innovation? And I know often uh, my board, when we talk to them, it always asks, we want to be more innovative. We want to be creative. And I think one of the biggest things to be innovative and creative is a board has to be a learning board. And a board also sets the tone and the relationship with the superintendent to create conditions for innovation and not necessarily being innovative themselves, but being innovative as a board. So in looking at uh, um, what some of the research says out there, the OECD talks about uh, what makes a learning organization very successful. Uh, it's important to have a shared vision of, on the learning of all learners, uh, create opportunities for continuous and relevant learning for staff, creating a culture of inquiry and innovation. And I think that's a lot of where our work has been in, in St. River School Division. And how do you promote team learning and collaboration and making sure there are systems for gathering and embedding information and sharing across the system? So that's learning with in the division and learning from the external environment as well. So in our division, we try to model and grow learning leadership and we think that is uh, very critical. So we define learning as a permanent change in thinking, or be, in thinking or behavior. If there's not a permanent change in thinking or behavior in the organization, then it's not really learning. So one of the big questions that uh, our board had years ago when I started is, how do we know we, how we are doing? And I would say um, our division, very progressive, very strong division, and I, I certainly don't want to uh, uh, necessarily brag about division. I know there's lots of great work going out uh, in the province of Manitoba and public schools, but I think that's a big question boards ask, and superintendent teams and schools. How do we know how we're doing? And I think that's a big focus of our work. So system improvement, how do the pieces fit together? And I've, in my time in St. River and over the last 20 some years in education, um, really been thinking about how do the pieces fit together? What is most important between working with the board and the superintendent and then eventually through the system? What are the pieces that are most important to create a culture of continuous improvement? And I think the first four that I'm gonna briefly talk about um, are the ones that are probably most important from the board, but they all fit together. And that first one is um, a shared mission and vision. And I think every division has to have a shared mission and vision that really truly articulates the purpose of the division, provides a point of reference for decision making, provides that, gains that commitment from others, um, a real important part of the division because everything we do should be around that shared mission and vision. The second thing, uh, that's important is how are the budget structures and personnel policies and procedures fit into that shared mission and vision? And I think that's kind of a big part of the work of a, of a board, connecting those two pieces. Uh, the, third, the third item is a successful innovative board uh, is a policy-oriented oriented board of trustees. 
What are they focusing on their policies towards achievement gaps, equity, uh, learning, and the well-being of their of their staff and students? The fourth piece is relationships with staff and stakeholders. And I think if you want to be uh, relevant, um, innovative, creative, there has to be a climate of trust. And so these these four pieces are the cornerstone of, uh, of the board's work with the superintendent. And it's a shared work. It's the, it's a shared work between the board and the superintendent. Uh, the other pieces that are important is uh, where the board needs to be informed of and to be aware of, but is, is, is more in the monitoring side is what are the evidence that we use as a school division to inform our processes, to, to answer those questions of how we're doing, to look at how we know if we're successful or not, or where we need to put in some extra support or extra resources. The other, the other piece that's important is a coherent instructional system. And I think uh, this is one that uh, is, is really uh, been really an important part of St. River School Division. Um, what are the common pieces that sh are shared across all schools? What is the common language? What are the common assessment tools? Um, how do we utilize resources to support systems? And I think that, that has to be interconnected. I think uh, it's about a system improvement. It's not about an individual or school improvement. So for that, there has to be a lot of coherence and common language. Um, the other side is leadership development across all systems. Uh, we have to be constantly thinking, not about just next year, but five years down the road, who are our knowledgeable folks, uh, who are our knowledgeable people who can support and guide and push and to learn and to share with others? Uh, what do our principals need? What do our resource teachers need? What do our lead teachers need? What do our classroom teachers need? What does our board need? And what does our superintendent need? And the, the last piece is job embedded professional development. And I think that is one where uh, we have to ensure that there are, is continuous learning in our system. There's continuous learning and it starts at the board, uh, goes to the superintendent, goes with the teachers, goes with our principals. What is the, what is the collaborative ongoing work that continues? And I think uh, one of the things I've learned is that uh, the learning cycle never ends. It always continues and uh, it's messy. And you're constantly cycling back and what is our next step? What are we learning? What are those things? And I, I think if uh, a school division is, uh, is out of line in any of these areas, that's an area where they need to work on. And I, I'll go back to those, those first four items here. A shared mission and vision, um, policy-oriented board of trustees, budget structures, personnel, policies and procedures, and relationships with staff, staff and stakeholders. And I think those are, those are the critical components before we can get into the other areas. So in our division, uh, our, our learning is focused on our mission statement. And I'm just going to briefly mention it. We believe that uh, St. Irvish School Division engages students in learning experiences that develop literate, innovative, and socially responsible citizens. So our vision is learning today and shaping tomorrow. And I think it's important because uh, th that really sets the guide and the North Star for all the work that we do when we talk into uh, that shared vision and values. Uh, job embedded professional development, uh, leadership development, coherent instructional system. We have to go back to that. How do, how do we support that? Um, the second thing is, in our beliefs, is we believe, and, and I think uh, I'd, I'd like people to be thinking about um, what are your beliefs and what, are your, what is your mission and vision in, in your division so that you can maybe connect the two. But our, our, our core beliefs are children must feel valued, children will learn, and children's learning needs will be met. And those are big statements when we go back to our mission statement. And as a senior leadership team and with the board of trustees, if that's our belief system, do we truly believe that all children can learn? Do we believe that all teachers can teach? And do we believe that all principals can lead? And I think that's a question that we always have to ask ourselves because I believe we have to all believe that all children can learn, all teachers can teach, and that all principals can lead. And if there are challenges, what do we need to do to make sure that happens? So in my work with the board, um, I think one of the questions we talk about accountability, we talk about uh, what is the board relationship in all this to make some fit all some of these pieces together. And we talk about accountability, but we're trying to move towards responsibility, a shared responsibility. So when we look at 
the relationship of uh, the board uh, board behavior, board uh, work, you, you have a continuum where it goes from uh, rubber stamping here on the left, taking things at face value, holding the system accountable, asking for a lot of information or grilling. And uh, I think uh, the trust and healthy skepticism is kind of like the sweet spot where uh, we would where we would like to see the board working with the senior leadership team. And um, I, I think depending on the issue or the improvement cycle, we're, we're going to be moving somewhere in between that trust and healthy skepticism. If we're, if we're not providing enough information, maybe some uncertainty and increased skepticism. And that's kind of that conversation and that working together on how do we move so that we keep into that holding accountable or holding responsible? Because that is truly where uh, good comfort and work is, and it's that shared relationship. Uh, we want we want our board uh, to have a caring, inquisitive heart and intelligent, skeptical mind. And I think uh, that's one of the areas that uh, is important in working in a school division system is that there's that uh, shared responsibility between the board and the superintendent, and then eventually down the system. So I I think. When you're when you're thinking of uh, improvement cycle in, in your own school division, how do you get into that holding accountable spot? So I'm just going to share a little bit about uh, our, our St. River School Division priorities because that comes from our mission statement. And I'm going to focus mostly on the first one and uh, because I, I know we only have about 25, 30 minutes and I, I really wanted to... Uh, uh, show a little bit about our, our, our cycle of improvement in one area. Uh, so we have four board priorities and our board priorities um, typically don't change for four years um, and I think that's an important piece for the system that there's continuity, there's not continuous change and that we're continuing to work on cer certain things. So uh, one of our largest priorities is expanding evidence-based decisions that support excellence and innovative practices uh, and literacy, focusing primarily on literacy and numeracy. And uh, you can see the other three priorities that are there. And I want you to think about your own priorities. And I want to talk a little bit about the learning cycle in our school division. So with, with, our, with our literacy initiatives, um, and I know every board will have uh, something similar, uh, we have an education topic every board meeting. And every board meeting, um, that becomes a, a major part of our work in providing information to the board. Um, and I think it's really critically important that school divisions, uh, what we're working on that we share with our board and that we provide information so they can ask good questions, so they understand why we're doing things and so they can become knowledgeable. Um, the second piece that we've uh, done, and this has gradually changed over time, is we do formal reporting three times annually to our board and the first one in uh, November, coming up at the end of November, then in April, and then in August. And those are written reports from uh, the senior administration team on updates on uh, the four priorities and things that we're working on, questions we have, challenges we're doing, uh, some of the uh, learning that we've done, what our next steps are. With the August, uh, the August reporting period being a, a major uh, look at all our data and analysis. Uh, as well, we have a board self-evaluation that we do uh, in May and June, which provides information on the working of the board and information about how we're doing on our board priorities and what trustees are really interested in learning more about. Because I think that that's become a really important part uh, of of our work. So, what I want what I want to share next is I want to talk a little bit about our literacy initiative and. Um, not that, uh, not that uh, what we're doing is what everyone should be doing, but I want to talk about it in terms of the cycle of learning and why it's important for the board to be a learning board. And I think um, if, if you want to make successful change and move a system, uh, the board has to be involved, the board has to understand, and the board has to be big picture about this is where we'd like to go, and it's the superintendent's team and then down through the system to decide how they're going to get there. So in 2009, um, uh, St. River School Division was a, a very uh, site-based, uh, very progressive school division. Uh, lots of differences from school to school in our K-8 and uh, lots of similarities, but lots of differences. 
And uh, our board of trustees asked a question about how do we know how we're doing? And MSBA held the um, MSBA at their conference had a session on the Iowa Lighthouse Project uh, uh, leadership for student learning using data and evidence. There was a presentation there, and uh, after that after that session, we had a long conversation about uh, how how do we how do we know how we're doing and what could we do? So our board of trustees asked if we could. Uh, uh, order the leadership for student learning and to go through this as a, a study period with our board and and I think this is a really critical statement uh, that I wanted to make because leadership does come from the board and it does it is shared with the superintendent's team we we did a study at our board meetings over a year and a half period on this uh, leadership for student learning and at the same time uh, our schools were we had three school uh, principals who wanted to uh, develop some common assessments and work together. So we piloted a common assessment across three schools in, in our division. And um, from that, we reported back to uh, the rest of our principals team about where we we're going and what we wanted to do. And what we wanted to make sure in our system was we didn't want teachers to have to go from one school and move to a new school and they were doing the same things but talking in different language and using different assessments and using different tools. We wanted uh, people to be uh, having that coherent system. So um, we developed after that first pilot year, system-wide implementation of common assessments in our school division, which was Fondas and Pinnell. Uh, the literacy data was reported four times annually, and it was reported twice annually to the board of trustees, school by school, grade by grade. And there was common literacy professional development. And I wanna mention why, um, why I think this pre-board work is important. Um, when, when you are implementing in a system uh, a common approach across, um, sometimes the system uh, isn't always excited or enamored with uh, data and how they're going to use data. And I think that for our division, uh, because our, our board went through this and we talked about the pros and cons of using data, the pros and cons of uh, using the evidence, and what was our purpose for looking at data? And we went back to our first big question, which is, how do we know how we are doing? And I think one of the conversations we were able to have as a board and senior leadership team is, if we want our system to use data well, what do we need to have to do so that they look at it with an inquisitive mind. So one of our big questions was, what are we going to do if we don't like the data we see? And I th we had a lot of conversation because I have to say there was some data we weren't too happy with in terms with how some of our students were doing and some of our grades and some of our schools. But data is a place where we start and data is a place where we uh, get inquiry and data is a place that lets us know where we need to pay attention to what supports we need to do. And I think it was really critical for our board to have gone through this study. Um, I think one of the things that uh, uh, is really important is to really know if you're gonna use evidence, why are you using it? And what are you using it for? And I think it's important that the board knows that. Um, the last thing we wanted to hear, uh, have is, uh, you know, uh, trustees or individuals or assistant superintendents or myself say, no, this school's not doing very well in here. We wanted people, we want our teachers to be really uh, interested and curious and know that they're not being evaluated based on data or judged. It's part of a conversation. So I think one of the things that uh, in, in our cycle that we talked about was we, we went through that study, we talked about it and we said, here's the assessments we are using. We're using Fondas and Pinnell, which is a leveled reading system. And we shared what were what are the strengths of the Faunus and Pinnell, what are the weaknesses, because we certainly don't want students chasing reading levels. We want it more than that, but it does provide a common area for us to have conversations. The other, the other data piece uh, that we used was uh, provincial assessment data and the Mary Clay observation survey data. And um, over time, in, in, in this, we initially it started with um, providing reports to schools and having conversations and coming back and where were we going to put interventions, where were we going to put supports and sharing that with the board. And uh, 
Um, I have to say, when you first start assessments, when um, as the teachers association is not too excited about uh, having to assess reading in a, in a formal way, uh, well, initially it was four times a year, now it's twice. Um, and when the teacher association is asking to meet with the board and they're not happy about workload issues, the board having an awareness of what and why made a huge difference for us. And I think that's important. Um, we, we want to, in our division, make sure that we provide the right information. Uh, we have that opportunity. Um, uh, you have, we have that opportunity to really look at things with a critical way and, ha and set, have some sort of basis for how we're doing. So I think that's a really critical piece for the board and superintendent. And going back to that, um, if the board's making policies, what are they making policies on? If the board is uh, uh, putting resources or budget into certain areas, how are they deciding and why? Uh, it's not about making sure every school has the same things. It's making sure that every child has this, the same opportunity. And sometimes that same opportunity means you're going to have more resources in one in one facility more than another. Um, so I think that that's been a critical part of our of our cycle of inquiry. And one of the things I'll, I'll say is that uh, uh, a big question I'll say to both superintendents and and to the board and to school boards is, what are you going to do if you see data that doesn't excite you? Because how you respond is probably the most important thing. And I think. Um, in our situation, we had to do a lot of work on uh, areas where we need to grow and recognize that it's not going to grow uh, and change in three months. It's going to change over time. So um, what have we learned from our data uh, from, from, the, from this? So uh, as a result uh, of our work, uh, the last uh, four years, we, we have a grade two, grade five, and grade eight divisional data wall. Every school has their own data wall. And I'm not saying to uh, school boards out there that every school should have a data wall. I think what the question is, what evidence are you using and how do you know and what is your system using? And how do you use it as a, as a, as a springboard for conversation, for common conversation, for common professional development? so that there's common links across schools and uh, there are many ways there are many ways to do this same piece what i'm sharing is a small component of of our division where we use literacy data and just sharing what we've learned so one of the things that uh, i've got up here i didn't really want to publicly put our school data wall, our school division data walls up but we have a, a data wall for grade two grade five and grade eight in our division office that has the number of students that are above uh, grade level, how many are at grade level, and how many are uh, slightly below, and how many are way below at that risk, and what we're worried about. And what's interesting is uh, it's been the starting point for inquiry in our division office. It's been the starting point for uh, what type of professional learning do we need, uh, what type of expertise do we need in our schools. It's information we've shared with our board. Um, it's things that we've tracked over time. And what you're seeing here on this picture, uh, these are sticky notes. And this is from grade two, grade five, and grade eight. And uh, this is from last year. Um, what, uh, through some of our conversations, one of the things that uh, came up when we started looking at our data is uh, how do we identify, we don't want to just look at percentages and say 75% of our kids are doing really well or 85% of our kids are really doing well. We also wanted to know who are the students in schools that were struggling. So if you were to go into our school division office, you would see on the uh, on our data wall sticky notes at the bottom of each. And this would be grade two, grade five, and grade eight. So these sticky notes here, each one of these represents a student. And last year at the start of the year, each sticky note here, or each student, was uh, 1.7 grade levels or below in reading. And what was that? what's a powerful uh, piece of our change is all these stickies here, which are individual students, are students that are no longer uh, way below reading level and moved off through the interventions we put in. And I think one of the things that we, we, we wanted to say is that uh, as, as part of our conversations and conversations with school principals and with uh, school teams and with the board is 
if we have a challenge, what do we know? What are we going to do about it? And how do we know? And how do we celebrate? Uh, when we started doing this uh, four years ago, there was four times as many of these uh, stickies when we started. So it's quite a quite a, an accomplishment or quite a celebration. Uh, but it, the work doesn't stop there. I think um, some of the things that uh, we've learned from uh, our conversation is uh, data is just the starting point for inquiry. If we want critical thinking and different and and kids to have authentic voice and choice, having a common data point just allows people to have a conversation on where students are at, what they're doing, what we need to do. And for the board, where do we need to put supports in? Uh, over the last three years, uh, we've invested lots in early literacy intervention, and the board's consciously done that because of uh, uh, what they've seen for data, what they've seen from evidence. So, you know, we have a school of 170 students with three half-time reading recovery teachers. Uh, they had no reading recovery teachers uh, uh, four years ago. And that's a direct response to what we see in there and what's the purpose of it. So I think uh, what we know is interventions work. We also know that uh, it's not just hiring reading recovery teachers or having coaches. We've learned that uh, if you want to have really good inquiry at, the, at a school level, you need to have expertise. And you, it's not just having decent teachers. You need to have really highly trained uh, folks. So. When it comes into the budget and conversation times, our board's been very um, uh, proud of the fact of what they've invested in is making a difference and the change that's been there. And I think it's important because uh, when, when we're in times of tight budgets, how do you go back to your mission statement? How do you go back to yourself as a learning board? How do you go back and say, this is what uh, is really important to us and we know that this is important and we can't let this go. And I think that's that. Uh, constant part and I think uh, the other side of it is uh, the board also has to be aware of uh, what interventions are we using and uh, what types of things are we using and why and why did we choose them and I think uh, you know we have our reading recovery teachers come and present we have classroom teachers we have principals come and present to the board uh, we share it's really that shared um, that shared learning between the board and the and the senior op division because I think if we want to keep that holding accountable uh, we have to create create that climate where as a senior team we can share where we're not doing so well uh, and we can be asked hard questions based on knowledge um, so that we can make sure that uh, we're, we're doing this together and I think there's a, a, a different part it's it's a shared work the, and I'll keep on going back to it. Uh, the Board of Trustees sets the mission and vision and the big overarching goals where they'd like to go. And the senior administration team uh, through the schools and develops okay, the how and why and what we're going to do and, re and reports back. And I think um, we want to we want to have the expertise decide and we want to have the expertise do things, but we want the board to be informed so they can ask really good questions and, you know, to make sure things are working. So, uh, for us, uh, in that cycle of improvement, it really comes down to that quality teaching and learning. And um, that is ultimately going to have the biggest impact on students. Uh, and it's had the biggest impact on, on change. Um, what are our high expectations and accountability? You can check on our website for our divisional, uh, our divisional uh, uh, outlines of expectations and goals and what does it look like in terms of uh, uh, what we share with all our staff and all our students, uh, which has been, been co-created with our principals and leadership teams. Um, what does quality classroom instruction look like? It's, it's, um, it's really important that our principals know that and we know that. And part of that is not just um, looking at data results and looking at how we're doing, but actually going in and seeing uh, what it looks like. So we have a number of processes we've done as a school division with our school uh, leadership teams to, um, um, to really provide that feedback, that descriptive feedback to our schools. Uh, 
uh, to we take a lot of pictures, we do a lot of conversations, um, and we've uh, invested in huge leadership teams. Um, and really, it comes down to that e effective leadership piece. So I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you to think about in your own areas where you're working. Um, what does your leadership team need? Uh, what expertise do they need? What strength do they need? What does your system need if you want to have real growth? You can't just uh, have uh, improvement without having the expertise to deliver it. And that takes an investment. And that investment doesn't uh, start seeing necessarily showing results right away. Sometimes it takes uh, two or three years to start developing folks. And for us, it's a focus on all students learning and sustain improved efforts over time. And I think that... Uh, uh, it's it's a completely completely cyclical program where a program where uh, we're working together. It's not a can program. It's not uh, we're we're never getting there. But we're also uh, constantly reflecting back with our leadership teams on what's working, what's not, and how do we, and where do we go to next. So I think when it goes back, if you go back to my uh, slide back uh, back here. I'm going to go back quickly is this is really what's critical the board has to have a shared mission and vision the coherent instructional system means there's going to be interventions for both schools or students who need them how are they working how are they not what are the board's policies uh, in, in regards to the well-being student achievement uh, and changing those things and how do they maintain the relationship with staff and stakeholders and i think that is uh a critical component when when we're asking our our teachers and our principals to do things that are really challenging do they trust that they're not going to be judged do they trust that they're not going to be um, uh, held accountable for something out of their control do they also uh, trust that there's going to be ex high expectations of success and i think that's the important part uh, it's taken, um, it takes a number of years to get to the point where uh, teachers aren't nervous when you walk into their classroom or our schools aren't nervous about sharing their data. And I think that's probably been one of the most powerful things that we've seen in our school system is, is that school teams are sharing their data good and bad and indifferent and where they have challenges and looking within that data to say, okay, why are these kids struggling and why are these kids making so much gains? And I think that's where we've had some of the most uh, impressive learning. Uh, we, I was in the school um, uh, two weeks ago and we were at the, in front of their data wall with their, uh, their leadership team and we were noticing a grade uh, one, two classroom where the growth was tremendous. And so uh, there was four students who made remarkable growth in the, uh, from the previous year and we, we would decide to go walk in and look and see what was happening in the classroom. There was lots of purposeful nonfiction writing, and it really asked questions about where is there really good practice in our system? What's working and why? And how do we connect those teachers or those schools with each other to learn from each other? Learning is not a private, uh, uh, professional, autonomous situation. It's a collective professional uh, obligation. So. I think that's uh, an important part, and my job as a superintendent to working with the board is um, is to uh, provide them with things of what and how do we monitor and uh, provide them with information so they can ask me good questions, and sometimes they're uncomfortable questions for myself, and I think that's an important uh, uh, part of that leadership piece, and it comes down to... Um, having a really trusting relationship between the board and the superintendent. Um, it's about uh, being honest and working together. Uh, and if you want to be innovative, and this is one thing that my board's been incredibly uh, uh, supportive in, is if we make mistakes, it's not the end of the world. It's what we do and how we learn from mistakes. And I can share a number of different things over the years where we haven't been successful in three or four tries, and on the fourth try, remarkable growth. And I think that's an important thing. So for me, one of the big idea questions is, uh, for us as a leadership team, what are the core practices that we need to put into place in our day-to-day -day practices as leaders? Uh, so is that as a board? 
and that is uh, uh, that is the board, and that is the superintendent's team, and that is our principals, and that is our school leadership team. The other thing is, uh, what specialized skills do we need to develop? If we have um, challenges in our system, you need expertise. Who, who do we have in our system who can do that? And if we don't, who do we bring in? And long term, uh, how do we invest in people so we can do that internally? And then the other question is, how can we know for certainty that we have adapted the most effective leadership approach? Uh, in, our, in our system, uh, there's all kinds of feedback loops. Uh, our senior team meets once a week on Wednesday mornings. We meet with uh, our uh, system improvement uh, team once every four weeks. We review uh, data, our next steps, or some of our challenges. We talk about things and we report back to the board. Um, so I do have a question is, uh, what do we do when we see that data that doesn't excite us? And that's a good question. Um, for, for us, it was a sense of urgency uh, when we saw data that didn't excite us. And um, I think uh, if you see, and I can go back and I'll say we saw a real trend uh, uh, about five, six years ago, where our grade two students were, our early year students were really struggling. And, uh, and we weren't too excited with the, the data. So we uh, shared it with our uh, principals. We gave each, each school uh, their own uh, data piece to look at and to talk about it and what they thought. And we, and we came up with what are some things that we wanted to do. We came up with some goals as a, as a piece. And then we thought, what supports do we need? And, uh, um, you have you have to develop an action plan, and what expertise do we need? Um, so we 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 brought in external people to help us. At that time, it was Allison Matz that came in and did a, a lot of work with us. We spent a lot of time on uh, reading assessment with our early years teachers, uh, so we had learning days, um, and we looked at that and looked at what worked. I think uh, one of the things that uh, has evolved since that is. Um, and, and this wasn't necessarily popular at first. And sometimes that's the question. It's when, when you have something that you can say uh, it's, it's not well, people have a hard time necessarily arguing with data. So it does create a sense of urgency. So it can provide you an opportunity to uh, have uh, that good conversation, the good conversation, but then you have to put in an action plan. So. In the last, uh, grade two is a big marker for us. Uh, we know lots of jurisdictions have done. We want all our kids to be, you know, at reading level by end of grade three. So grade two has been a big focus. Um, every um, every school in our division uh, with student who's at risk at the start of the year in grade two uh, is required to have an intervention plan. And actually our system superintendent and our early lit consultant meet with the schools three times a year. They go through the plans, they look through the updates. And I have to say, it wasn't very popular at first. Uh, and uh, people were like, okay, they're not going to come back. But that consistent follow-up and conversation, uh, it's, it's night and day. The schools have completely taken ownership of it. And it's, it's because it's done in a way that uh, they're hard questions, but it's really support. And then we've also added lit support in schools. And I think that's the, the big thing. Like, if a school is overwhelmed or is having some uh, big challenges, what, as a board and as a senior team, what supports are you going to put in to help them? Uh, what's the capacity that they have? And I think that goes back to that trust piece. Um, in, in our division, we really look at the leadership pieces and leadership teams, and we do we have we do move staff around. Uh, and part of it is we're trying to to match uh, skills and needs, and we're not that spread out. So in some ways, it's sometimes a little easier. And there's a strong trusting relationship there. So, but I would say. If, if, if you have, what do you do when you have data that doesn't excite you, you need to sit down with a team and look at it and have a conversation. What do you think? Who do you need to bring in uh, in terms of, is it the school level or not? Um, what, are, uh, what are some observations you can do? Is it obser observing classes, taking notes? What are, the, what are the strengths? And then you have to come up with a plan and you have to be committed to it. And I think the biggest thing to me uh, for school trustees is, how you respond uh, as a trustee and how I respond as a superintendent uh, says to the system how comfortable they can be. If I want my staff to be comfortable with data, 
or be comfortable with evidence I have to say we're in it together and if they don't if it if they feel like it's just a judgment on their teaching or a judgment on them as a principal uh, without providing supports and looking at things then we're gonna have a hard time with using data in our system and that's probably one of the things that's the hardest I mean uh, as leaders we want all our schools to be uh, incredibly strong and successful uh, I'm not sure if there's any other questions if there's any other questions please feel free to to ask them um, this certainly could be a full day and I could share some of our cycles more um, but I certainly um, there's lots of good things happening in divisions you have to really look at what do you how do you know how you're doing and why um, we want to look good more than on paper we want to look good in the classrooms we want to look good with kids uh, which requires us to be in schools and be in classrooms and to work with uh, folks so I do want to say that remember it's about context uh, you can get good ideas from my division or other divisions there's different ways to do it but it is about your context where are you in, in your current system in terms of those four four first principles uh, trust you with staff and relationships your mission vision and values your uh, uh, board budget and principles I think those are uh, critically important uh, and if you, you still have to work on everything it's not just about capacity building we're always doing capacity building but we're doing capacity building while we make sure that we have four strong pillars first that trust within the system and that trust between the superintendent and board is, is incredibly critical in my view and leadership matters and leadership matters from the board uh, the board I believe needs to be a learning board an innovative board isn't necessarily creating all these innovative things they're supporting innovative practices and I think that's a different part uh, are there any other uh, questions I'll, I'll stay on for a couple minutes I wanted to mention that um, at the on the end screen I put a couple of resources and I'm not sure um, for, for yourselves these are questions that I ask myself um, so I have uh, there's one on a uh, placemat where it has our our mission statement and our four priorities and there's questions I ask of the that I think when I'm working with the board as a superintendent uh, and questions that I, I ask of them and of us as a senior administrative team things that we talk about and ask and, and it's shared between the board and also things from our system and those are questions that I thought I'd put because these are things I think about they're not necessarily all the questions but certainly something that I would uh, I uh, encourage you to look at and ask your own what do you know in your system and how do you work uh, with your senior admin team or how does the senior admin team work with the board I think it's um, uh, critically important that it's a shared responsibility but the superintendent's team uh, plays with the trains uh, the board lays the track and sets the foundation and then the other uh, piece is a document just on some questions uh, or some statements on uh, things that we worked on with Lynn Sherrod and Bev Friedman and others on creating a culture of continuous change and improvement uh, I also I got one last question here I mentioned job embedded PD so I was asked to please explain what I uh, mean by job embedded PD so uh, for job embedded professional development uh, we really try not to have one and done's so there is a place and what I mean by one and done is you go to uh, a nice workshop and it's good PD and you go right back and there's not much there so uh, for us job embedded professional development is going to lead to permanent change in thinking and behavior so uh, for classroom teachers uh, some of it might be in a co-teaching format uh, some of it might be uh, uh, on assessment it's it's bringing people together and they have to have homework and follow up and I mean it's it, it can't be something that they do and go on their own it has to be a part of it um, so uh, without collaboration between teacher and teacher uh, it's pretty hard to make uh, long-term change on a whole system so for me job embedded PD is providing opportunities for collaboration where teachers get to work together and they go back in the system and do it together and they come back and they share about their findings so we've done that through coaching we've done that through professional learning days and we've also done that through learning teams where schools have done it uh, the last two years uh, our big leadership forum 
uh, we end up bringing out a, a little over 100 staff out of a 360 professional staff. So almost a quarter of our staff to work together. So there's teachers and resource teachers, principals, so that we can plan and work together and have the same language. So that would be job, job embedded PD, if that makes sense. Uh, it has to be something where there's follow up and it, it leads to permanent change. Any other uh, questions? I don't know if I answered that uh, to your liking. I'll stay on for maybe one more minute and uh, happy for you to email me and ask questions. Certainly not trying to brag about our division, just trying to say these are things that I see, uh, whether it's in uh, technology, whether it's in social justice or other projects that we've done, these are common pieces that have to be together uh, and continually cycle back to. Thank you very much and I hope you have a great day.